In the 1930s and 40s, cities across the country began using federal dollars to build interstate highways, public housing, and remove blight throughout urban renewal. Knoxville used that funding to clear slums and substandard housing and to build James White Parkway. It impacts thousands of individuals and hurts some of the very people it intended to help, especially minorities. As we continue to look back at the history of East Knoxville, we see how what was dubbed progress changed the face of communities from downtown to Magnolia. I grew up down in the bottom. Former state representative Robert Booker and Knoxville's only black mayor, Daniel Brown. Whenever I come to this park, I'm back in my old backyard. Lived in two different neighborhoods in downtown. The bottom, named for its low-lying topography. The KUB building on Jackson Avenue sits on my front yard. And Morningside. I was born across the street. From what's now Dr. Walter Hardy Park. This was a working class neighborhood. Nothing fancy, just regular ordinary houses, uh, working class people. Until the early 60s, African-American homes and businesses filled downtown's east side. First Creek flooded the bottom every year. The creek would rise either because of heavy rains or melting snows. And people who lived there just got used to the idea that they, gosh, I hear the water under the floorboards. And many of the houses in that area were substandard. So uh, we, we just had to rough it in the bottom. Many without electricity, plumbing, or running water. When urban renewal began in the late 50s, it brought welcomed improvements to the bottom. There were still people living in, literally in third world conditions. Uh, we knew that those structures needed to go. We knew that that creek needed to be corralled. And there were other things that required urban renewal. But unfortunately, urban renewal went too far. Especially as the city's nearly two decades of urban renewal projects spread east. There were positive developments, like the Civic Coliseum, but they came at a great cost. There were, by my count, 107 black businesses that were destroyed by urban renewal. There was a total of 14 black churches that were destroyed by urban renewal. Nearly 3,000 structures demolished, including the African-American Carnegie Library, the Black Medical Arts Building, and the Gen Theater. But by the late 60s, you start seeing people saying, wait a second, we're tearing down way too much. Including Robert Booker, then a young lawmaker. Obviously, Denmark is not the only state in which there is something right. The church that I grew up in is torn down. The house that I grew up in is torn down. Uh, the house that I was born in, it's torn down. Like Mayor Brown, more than 2,500 families, 70% African American, were uprooted from their neighborhoods through eminent domain. What they had was may have been fair market value, but it was not replacement value. You, you, they didn't have a place that they could move into. Many of these people who were living in, in private homes before urban renewal had to move to public housing. They built Austin homes and college homes for black people and they built Western Heights for white people. And, and products didn't have any stigma to them at the time. They were just places, there were new places that had, uh, you know, uh, plumbing and electricity. And for many people, this was their first experience with that. And in, in so doing, they forced blacks further east, which meant that white people had to give up their property, which meant they had to give up their churches. So after 1963, East Knoxville basically became a black community. The building of James White Parkway's Eastern Loop put a physical divide between the community and downtown. Mayor Brown's family moved to the Burlington neighborhood off Magnolia. Our house would be like right here. And for decades, the property at his family's demolished home sat empty. My problem was nothing has replaced it. All you have now is just a park. Park is nice, but you know, it doesn't make sense to tear down houses to build, to build a park. Jarnigan and Son Mortuary is one of the only black owned businesses that survived urban renewal after moving to this current location on Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue in 1969. But once all of those businesses were scattered in, in different locations, 
they lost that cluster effect and lost the businesses. A lot of our landmarks, they don't exist because they, they're gone. And nobody thought about preserving a lot of things in the, that are historical to the black community. Urban renewal didn't just impact downtown. The University of Tennessee used it to expand campus into primarily white affluent areas and interstate construction damaged North Knoxville neighborhoods. Tomorrow at 530, we look at life after urban renewal with former NFL player and Austin East graduate Leroy Thompson.